Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Survival, where the Millionaires World Cup Tournament is finally getting underway with the first four matches of the first round is going to be shown tonight, as well as the champion of TLW, Prince Alexander McTavish, he's going to be in the ring again, saying whatever is on his mind, and I'm pretty sure if it's anything like last episode, it's going to be controversial. As always, I am Aaron Jackson, the voice of TLW, and I can't wait for this night to get a start. And here we go with the first match. This man, Yancey Hurley, is one half of the Have Not Tag Team. We have not tag team with his tag team partner, Dwayne Frank, who was also in the tournament. NC Hurley will be taking on a member of the newly debuted AMU Nation tag team. So we got a little bit of tag team warfare going on. This man is known as Dial 357. That that is his name. I'm not making that up. Part of the Ammunition Tag Team. They won their first match in TLW together against the Have Nots. So when this match gets underway, right now, you see Hurley already throwing punches. Look at this. Uh, I'm not sure how much how much force resistant that vest is that 357 is wearing, but it took a couple to get him down. But anyway, we are back here in in this arena for the second episode in a row. I do not know why we're in this arena. You know, I just when that's when it's time to go to work, they call me and they say go to the arena and uh. We haven't been in the, the warehouse, the original survival arena in a while. We still don't know why, why we're in this arena. We only know where we got the finances to be in this arena. We was here for Grand Slam and now we're back again. So maybe this has everything to do with the new owner of TLW. Three fifty-seven seems to be in control of this match so far. Yes, he Hurley's uh, well, he's face down on the mat, as you can see. Well, he was in control of the match with that power bomb out of nowhere. That was a humongous power bomb. You have to go to a replay. You see how he goes for the suplex feet, hits the ropes. Going back, it's going back and forth right now. That suplex, was, it came, I don't like the sound cliche, ladies and gentlemen, but it came out, whoa, wait a minute. What was this, whoa, was that a sunset flip power bump? How did he even do that? I've always wanted to know how they you how do they use that move? Like how do they how do they I don't know. Maybe if I ever step inside the ring. Maybe I'll learn how to do some of these moves. The Yanks is going for it's almost a two count. Still has not put in enough enough damage. He goes for another suplex. That one had some velocity to it. Looks like he missed the elbow. He was going for what the hell was that? <laughs> Dial 350, and now he's rubbing his face. Dial, free, Dial 357 is doing some things I have not seen before. A sunset flip, power bomb. Oh, that was a stiff clothesline. 
Nancy Hurley is not, he's not, he's not done. He's still showing fright. Sends him into the turnbuckle. Gave off something, goes into a clothesline. I just realized he only has one elbow pad for whatever reason. That seems counterproductive, if you ask me. Who knows? Maybe maybe his left elbow is uh is uh maybe it's a little bit and oh my god! I, I did not ex I did not expect that. <laughs> I just, two is that a three? It's a three count. Those knees to what was that? <laughs> Definitely need to replay. Look at this. I was not paying attention. It was a suplex into a backbreaker. It was one more time. Yeah, that one. I'm not sure the vest could uh, protect them against that. But wow, that was wow. The police have imposed a citywide lockdown on areas of capital city. The citywide state of emergency is still in effect. Come on, man, you just got back. This is a big ladder. Oh my god, yeah! Welcome back to Survival Episode 9. Again, I am the voice of TFW Aaron Jackson and returning from that last match which had me stuttering all over the place. Here is one half. One half of this SOE, the state of emergency. It's gonna be in solo action. This man right here is Jody. He is going to be taking on someone we should be all familiar with. That's right. One half of the tag team champions. As well as one half of the Thrasher kids. This is Corey Thrasher. These two have these two, well, including your partners have been in this 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 war I guess I can say uh, with the SOE debuting in attacking the Thrashers two episodes in a row now we finally get a fair contest between these teams can't wait to see can't wait to see how this turns out finally we get to see Corey Thrasher gets uh, a little bit of payback against one of the state of emergency members. Maybe, wait a minute, somebody's coming down the ramp. And this Tyrone, that is Jody's tag team partner. Oh, well, first I have to say this. Tyrone is not supposed to be at ringside. That was a nice, almost took his head off of that clothesline. If you notice in the last match, both of those guys, Yancey Hurley and Dow 357, are tag. They are in tag teams, but their partners were not at ringside. But for whatever reason, Tyrone feels that it's perfectly fine for him to come out here. This is a solo tournament, one-on-one -on -one tournament. That was a headbutt. First of all, look at the size difference between Corey Thrasher and Jody. Corey Thrasher is maybe 5'11", 6 feet. These punches. Goodness, he looks like a small child in there. And he's matched up against Jody, who has to be about 6'4", maybe. 6'3", 6'4". Who's wrestling in the hat for whatever reason. Oh, that was a nice power bomb into the pin. One, two. That one was close. Corey Thrasher managed to... To kick out, drops the elbow. I don't know why Tyrone is out here, but from what we've seen of these, of these two so far, they don't play by the rules at all. 
You know, it seems like they're like the perfect counter for the Thrasher's high octane wrestling style. Using a lot of aerial maneuvers and uh these big guys are gonna they can inflict a lot of damage doing reversals and everything, but that was a nice DDT right there, sending them right into the canvas. And Jody goes, oh my god! His legs got caught up in the ropes. Um, I don't think, I don't think legs can get whiplash, but uh, see, so Cody Thrash is going to find out with a nice standing drop kick. That one definitely took the bad man off his feet. Good uppercut. You see Tyrone in solo action on conflict, and, and there's Jody now showing his skills on his own in the middle. Of, well, I can't say on his own because he's not on his own. Now I think I think it should be a rule that tag team partners should not they should not be at ringside in this tournament. They hold an unfair advantage. We want clean finishes. Both thinking the same thing, going for that. Oh, that was a nice. He, he even made Tyrone in the in the corner wince over there. Now Jody is showing off. Oh, you do not want this man going off of his feet. That was the elbow or a forearm. Uh, drop but coming from that guy who has to be about he has to be over 300 pounds guaranteed and he's Samoan so that's like an extra 100 pounds just for being Samoan <laughs> Corey Thrasher is going up top for the first time in this match that's where he's most comfortable at in the air and that was a nice elbow drop Punched him right in the gut. Goes for the uppercut. Reversed it. And the cold breaker. And go back to the waiting room. So we're going to go back to the waiting room. What you mean? It just closed the elevator on me. Children of Martin Joker. Bro, this nigga face is leaking. The only way. That dude face is missing. Um, <laughs> that nigga face RSVP. <laughs> that nigga face took a rain check. <laughs> and today we are behind the scenes on my set of my new movie, Business Mind. Together they are known as the amateur press. I mean, the beautiful people. If you guys want to cut up, oh, there's a cop car. Oh, son, I'm on the wrong side of the mother. Gotta get out of here. Oh, no, my God. Oh, shit. Versus it go oh thought he was gonna go to the outside with a headbutt from that visor that still staying knowing somehow. Now he sends him to the outside. There's no question we should have known he was gonna go flying. I hope Joey's not thinking about 
going in the air. If that man even makes it past the second rope, it's going to be a catastrophe. I don't know what is Corey Thrasher thinking going in that corner. My question is where where is his brother Joey? At least make it fair, Joey is not here. He's not here either. Oh, and the elbow right into the jaw. That was done to me. I would have. I would have. It would have. The match would have been over. It would have been done. I don't even think I can take a punch, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's a moment. Spike. Right to Corey Thrasher. Goes for the pin. This has to be it. Two. Whoa, wait a minute. Jody just lets. He just, I don't think he's done. I don't think he's done with this match. That was a definitely three count. Corey was not kicking out of that. He was definitely not kicking out of that Samoan spike. Not too many people do kick out of the Samoan spike. Now he's just waiting for Corey to get to his feet. Surprisingly being patient. Maybe he was trying to catch his breath. Moves him to his shoulders. Oh, and the Samoan drop. Oh, man. This match has to end. Where is Joey Thrasher? He... Corey needs help. He needs some type of... Some type of... Uh, some type of help in this corner or something. You know, it, you know, he's in a match with one guy, but it's kind of like he's fighting two. Wait a minute. Corey Thrasher is... Uh, Going outside the ring. What's he thinking here? What is he thinking? A drop kick. Double drop kick. That has to be a pin. You have to pin him. One. And two. And he kicked out just in time. It was almost a three count. That double drop kick had a running start. Shook the big man. Definitely. Corey Thrasher, he's gonna have to stay. He's gonna have to stay on him. He cannot let off of Jody. Now Corey Thrasher sends him into the ropes, and Tyrone grabs Corey's leg, and then the clothesline. I knew that somehow. I knew that somewhere along the way he was going to get involved some way. Just, and that's how it was. Grabbing the leg, distraction long enough. For this match to be over. One, two, you could count to ten, it will be done. And Jody and Tyrone wins. The state of emergency wins. After the distraction and that clothesline. Well, we know that this match is uh this match, this rivalry is not gonna end any time soon can guarantee that with the force yeah you can count to a hundred and it will be done yeah be 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 happy in yourself if you jump somebody to win tired of living in a violent society if every citizen was armed no one would be dumb enough to shoot people it's exactly the ethos our founding fathers had when they wrote the Constitution and then changed it, which is what makes it sacred now. Come mingle with safety-minded people like you at the Liberty City Gun Club. Our nation is still the world leader in one thing, armaments. Tuesday night is singles night at the Liberty City Gun Club, where we smile, flirt, and then blow things up. And you can too. Meet that lucky someone and try speed dating with an exciting RPG. Nothing says excitement like a night out with a small caliber semi-automatic weapon. Ammunition, protecting your rights. We are back in survival. Thank you for returning. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this video with all of your call friends. 
And here it is, the tag partner to dial 357. This man is 22. Not years old, his name is 22. <laughs> but uh, hopefully he'll have some better luck than his tag team partner earlier in the first match of the night. Who lost with that suplex backstabber com combination. These former police officers, uh, SWAT members, actually, are SWAT police officers, I think. I'm not sure. I've never seen SWAT in my life, and I don't intend to. And this man is Dwayne Frank. Tag partner of Yancey Hurley, member of the Have Nots. And yes, the only reason I remembered his name it's because the truck finally, finally left me in the mouth. I'm so glad that he cannot hear my commentary. Because I'm pretty sure he won't be too happy about me forgetting his name. I remember faces, not names. Okay? Give me a break. In this huge arena that we are filling out. You know, in, in all honesty, all honesty, ladies and gentlemen, when we did Grand Slam, the arena was not sold out. But ever since we returned to the arena, the seats have been getting more full and more full with each edition of Survivor. Second week, second week, second episode of us being here. So into this match, clothesline into the, to the corner there. Dial, dial 350. This is not dial 357. I'm forgetting names again. Wait a minute. Look at this. Goes right into the pin. Kicked out at one. Like I said before, these vests that these guys are wearing has to offer some sort of protection against those moves. There's a nice spine buster by Forever 22. That's his name. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Next time, be a little bit more snippy. Dial 357 and his partner in the ring right now, Forever 22. The ammunition of former SWAT team members decided that swatting was uh, not their calling in life, it was stone suplex. They decided that, hey, they should be professional wrestlers. And guess what? Final Elite Wrestling, we gave them a platform. So far, oh no, he's gonna, he's doing squats right now. The former SWAT is doing squats, suplex. <laughs> An amazing test of strength. These guys almost the same, same height, but Dwayne Frank has a couple pounds on him, and he was able to hold him in the air and do a couple squats. Uh, Right back into the ring. Wayne Frank going against the ropes. Drops an elbow right into the stomach. Wayne Frank is feeling it. Whatever he's feeling. Maybe that is what he was feeling. He just tossed him halfway across the ring. No, oh, no, belly to belly suplex. Yeah, yeah, up. Oh, well, the lady in the green shirt is not feeling them. <laughs> she is showing her, uh, showing her emotions in the form of two thumbs down. So, punch right into the back of the head. That's not legal. Right, he's gonna have to, gonna have to pay attention to that. And, oh, thought he was going for a back suplex. And it was reversed. By the way, Frank goes for a pin hand over the face. Two. Oh, it was almost a two count. Still has some fight left in him. Also, he said, boy, that was a wild haymaker. But ladies and gentlemen, remember to go to TLW Wrestling 
www.weebly.com to read my episodic survival review where I review every episode and every match as well as some random thoughts on wrestling. Let's go to TLW. That, hold a minute. That, that was a military press slam. And then he goes into a front flip. Goes for the pin. The crowd's liking it. Kicks out. I don't think they like that too much. But as I was saying, TL wrestling.weebly.com will be in the description box as well as in the comments. Just click on news and the newest episode review will be there. Episode 9. Also make sure to go and subscribe to Ayo Ghost on YouTube and watch the wrestling on his channel goes in for the pin and he lets him off but apparently on the on the AO Ghost channel there's going to be there's going to be a world heavyweight championship tournament neither champions tournament over there soon so make sure to go over there subscribe click the notification bell so when the tournament goes up, you won't miss it. Dwayne, meanwhile, Dwayne Frank sends him to the ropes. Stops him. Goes for a swinging neck breaker. Smash is still going on. Around the world again. Oh, I don't know what he was going for there, but he ran right into the shoulder. A from of 20. Two, that was uh, an amazing move right there. Wayne Frank is out. Better hurry up and pin him to worry about dragging him. Don't want to get from any time. Ref goes in for the count. That, that is unbelievable. The fact that he kicked out before a two count shows how much he wants that million dollars, but how much he also wants a shot at the TLW Championship. Yeah, he's a tag team, but who doesn't want to be the champion you know I'm a commentator and I would love to be the champion I'm glad we don't have 24-7 rules in TLW because if I was the champion trying to call the action I would be in the action so don't know how I can commentate and defend my title at the same time elbow right into the face I just realized she still has those glasses on. How have they, number one, how have they not broken? Number two, how are they staying on? He must have glued, must have glued the glasses to his face. Well, Frank is showing the, the effects of this match. Trying to move slower. Now, Forever 22 sends him into the rope, reverses it. Went for a punch, reversed that to a punch of his own. Now he has him in the submission. Well, he had them in the submission. Wayne Frank's fighting out, elbow right into the vest again. Don't know if that vest is bulletproof, but it offers some sort of protection. With a jumping knee right to the neck. Is that legal? <laughs> I don't think that's legal. Referee needs to do his job. By the way, I'm I know I know the referee's name. I'm calling him referee because he's not doing his job. If he was doing his job, I would call him Bill Porter. That is his name. And then that was a powerful spine buster. I got the crowd off of on his feet. One, a two, almost a three count. That one was close. That one was definitely close. Since the one front ran to the rope, well, he reversed it. All of the, all of the, the attempted corner moves have been reversed so far. Rebound the suplex off of the top rope. Rain Frank is uh looks like he's he's moving on fumes right now. 
it hasn't been in a match this long in TLW. This is the longest match so far. You know, I don't even know where to attack these guys. They have padding all over the place. Elbow pads, knee pads, vests on. Go to the pin right by the ropes. Oh, but there's a three count. <laughs> Was not expecting the three count right there. And that match is over. Cannot believe. Look at this replay. Look. Oh my god. And ammunition are down too in this tournament. Have not or up to. As we return to TLW, Survival Episode 9, this is the main event. As well as the final bracket for tonight, the final bracket match for tonight. This man is Reese Omega. Returning to survival. I think he's done with conflict. He's been on conflict for a long time. He returned last episode with a win over Mikey Toff and no oh boy. That man the Salem Bell, the lightweight champion. This man's entrance will make your eyes hurt. Not because he's ugly, but for obvious reasons. It's main event time as the referee rings the bell. Goes right into the lockup. Reese Omega is on a hot streak after coming off another pinfall victory over Mike over Mikey Toff last episode. In the number one contenders match. This is a oh that was a nice power bomb to the outside. That is padding, but it's not a padding Salem flies to the court screw. Like I said before, Reese Omega defeating Mikey Toff again, causing much frustration in Toff. Refusing to answer, uh, refusing to answer a couple inter a couple interview questions. Reverses that. It's almost like a dream match. Saint Bell 
Goes to the suplex. The man has been a proud champion after finally winning the championship at Grand Slam. Kick right into the lower back. He came out last episode to congratulate Reese Omega on his win. These, these two are, uh, they're going to have a match in the future, but whoever wins this match will be one step closer to the TLW Championship. So it could be potentially one of, well, if Salem Bell wins this match, he could be the first ever double champion in TLW history. He could be both the light heavyweight champion and the TLW champion. At the same time, Dora jumped right into his stomach. Saint Bell showing off. That had to hurt. And the bell goes for a springboard leg drop right into the pin. Well, that was, I think, that may have been the one count. You never know what Salem Bell. He's uh, a very, uh, see what he was doing right there. He's a very, I don't want to say crazy, but he's different. Let's say that. Salem Bell is different. Looks like he's going for another aerial move. Springboard drop kick. So Reese Omega right off of his feet. Goes for the pin. That time we actually did get a one count. And a nice, nice axe handle right there. Goes up to the top rope again. Wait a minute, what is this? Double feet. Double stop. Somewhere they call that another thing, another word, but uh we use that. We might have some uh some uh problems, so we're not gonna say the name of that move. But well, Reese Omega the move of his own. Say that on the back suplex. Yeah. Can't sue us for that one. Reese Omega stop right into the mid section. The same bell to the champion. That was a nice elbow drop right there. Lisa Mega has been expanding his, his, uh, his, oh, wait a minute, it's a three. Oh, it was almost a three. Lisa Mega has been expanding his, his, uh, offensive move set. He used some of those moves to defeat, to defeat Mikey Toff last episode. Showing more, showing off more moves. Uh, not that one, same bell. That I don't know what to call that. Uh, maybe it was a three count move, two count. It was close, very, very close. The match is not done yet. No, I think that was a Frankensteiner. I should just say that for every. All of those moves, because I don't want Scott Steiner to be angry at me. And another stomp right into the main section. One, a two, and a three. Reese Omega kick out. How I do not know. But now Sigma Bell. Wait a minute, he's going for a power bomb and no, a bat breaker. I thought that was going to be a double on the hurt power bomb, but it wasn't. He's so maybe with the headbutt. I don't think I've seen him do a headbutt before. Sam Bell is showing off his offensive moveset as well. And another kick out. In this 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 World Cup tournament. Who is the best wrestler? Now they're trading back blows blow for blow. Russo Mega getting the better. You're not gonna. It's Mikey Toff. It's. What is he doing? The match has just been thrown out because of. What 
is she thinking? With a super duper spear, <laughs> Undertaker has now had two losses on the grandest stage of them all. Brooklyn, stand up. BK, home of rooftop gunshots, abortion clinics, liquor stores, jewelry, and porn shops. Stop the violence, the preacher's preaching, and he hops into his bends, tires screeching. Hypocrite, pay they no mind. We just gangsta roll our money and we stay on our grind. And never fear death until we lick on pavement. Never stress jail until it's time for arraignment. Well, Salem Bell has some choice words there for Mikey Toff after his invasion in Salem Bell's match with Riso Mega. But right now, it just got serious because the TLW champion is here and he has some words for us. Don't know what he's going to say, but uh, as I said at the beginning of the show, if it's anything like last episode, then it would be controversial. I really want to know what he has to say. I cannot, I cannot wait. You no know, surprise, because I haven't seen any of his goonies in a while. Ronnie Reynolds and Demon Cage. actually give him a shot at the championship <laughs> are you serious well this was some huge news at the infamy CPV it will be McTavish versus McTavish for the TRW championship 